Hey everybody, Z Garcia here. Today I'm taking a look at my top five quirky games coming out of Essen 2016. Uh, before I get going with the list though, I do want to mention that obviously these are games I have not played. They are games I might end up not liking. They might even be games that end up not being at the fair, you know, which is possible. If any games I thought were quirky I had already played, I disqualified them from being on the list, and also anything that is in our top 10 games we're most looking forward to at Essen, I also disqualified those. I wanted to, this to be a fresh set of five games that I thought sounded really interesting, sounded kind of bizarre, and very quirky, of course. So that's it. Let's kick it off with number five. My number five is a game called Amis Cube from publisher Danko, and the designer's name is quite simply Dr. M. That's very mysterious. And in this one, you are putting together this puzzle. It has these cool snapping together plastic cubes, and you build a bigger cube from, you know, uh, several of these smaller cubes, and then you are passing along your own pieces, and then quickly trying to make the cube again with the other player's original creations, right? It's this speed puzzle, uh, sort of strange abstract game. Seems like it's gonna be really fun. It's gonna give me kind of what I want from that style of, um, of puzzly game that is in which you are under pressure, you know, under a time limit. You wanna be first. And it just seems really, Bizarre, and I like it. It's got a cool made-at-home kind of look to it, and I think it's going to appeal to me. So that is my number five, Amis Cube. My number four is a game called Picasso, like Picasso, Picasso, from Haba and Carlo A. Frosi. And this one is a drawing game. It's a party game, it looks like. And in it, you are drawing a piece of a picture and then passing that piece to another player. And so you are all trying to figure out what a, um, like you're trying to put together a drawing basically, but you only draw a little piece of it and then you put them together on the board and whoever's the first one to figure out kind of what it is you're all drawing together is the one that wins. That's sort of what it seems to be. And I love those games that take a party concept and, and, do something cool with it. And this one seems to be doing something really clever and strange with good old Pictionary or something like that, you know? And it just seems neat. It seems like something I can I can play with the family, I can play with the kids, I can play with anybody, and we're all going to have a good time laughing and, you know, doing that joking about each other's section of a drawing and all of that, and oh my goodness, how could that possibly fit what I drew over here and all of that. So I like that concept. Seems like it's going to be a really funny one. That is Picassimo. My number three is a game called The Perfumer from publisher Big Fun Games. And the designer is Chu Lan Kao. And this one, the thing that is really quirky and bizarre about it is that your sense of smell is part of the game. It actually utilizes strips of, of uh, scented, I guess it's paper... And that's part of the game. You you utilize your sense of smell in order to play the game. And that is just... That's crazy. And I, I, I want to say there's more than one game this year, actually, that is using a similar concept like this. But this one looks very interesting and cool. And does not look like it's just some silly game, either. It looks... Like there is a game there, you know? It looks like there has been a lot of care and... and uh, love that's been put into this game good artwork the whole thing looks very impressive and then they go and tell you and eh, oh and, and you gotta use your sense of smell in this game what that is very cool to me so it's one i'm very much looking forward to it's got me intrigued you know is, is the best way to put it so my number three is the perfumer my number two is fold it from happy baobab and designer Taeyun Go. And this one is about all the players being chefs and you are quickly trying to come up with a recipe on this card that you flip. And that card shows uh, four dishes. So, you know, a two by two grid with four dishes 
and you have this piece of fabric that you then, racing the other players around the table, try to fold in on itself, sort of like think, you know, think folding up laundry, until only those four things are showing in just that right pattern to match that card, boom, and you win. And that is just clever and, and not something that you would think a game would make, and so it does, but I, I'm, I'm excited to take a look at it. I'm excited uh, about how it works, and the, the possibilities of it working. Is, is it a game that has enough there to be captivating? Is it a gimmick that's going to fade quickly? I don't know, and I really want to find out, and I think that's why it's so high on my quirky games list here, because it's just a really cool concept. And it's one that I'm kind of hoping hits and works well and could even be used as a part of a bigger game. You know, and that's very cool to me. I, I love games that introduce something to the market that, that, that then other companies or the same designer even can take and use as a piece in another bigger game. And I think uh, Fold It, you know, could have a chance to do that. It sounds pretty cool. So that's my number two. Fold it. And finally, my number one quirky game I'm most looking forward to here is a game called Dreams from Zoc and Olivier Gregoire. And this one is it comes across to me sort of like a Dixit style of game, like a like Dixit meets Spyfall is really what it seems to be. And those two games I'm very uh, impressed by. And this sounds like those two brought together in the game. All the players are gods, you are trying to create a new constellation. And so you flip over a few cards on the table, and everybody around the table knows which one of those we gods are going to make into a constellation in the sky, except one player who does not know which one card is the right card. And they all have very beautiful artwork, think Dixit-style Dixit artwork. And you are going to take turns putting out onto a... A, just a big round board, big black background, stones, you know, pebbles of different colors, but basically just put out a pebble and then the next player puts out a pebble, sort of the stars. And the person who does not know needs to bluff like they know. you got to do something that is not going to make everybody else go, why would you play there? And so it sounds like it might be abstract enough for people to get away with it, and I like that idea. And, you know, the, the, all the other players are trying to figure out who the fake one is. The fake one is trying to figure out which of the paintings is the one, you know. So you don't want to be too obvious either, because they'll get it. Just sounds really fascinating to me. Gimmicky, completely gimmicky and bizarre, but this could, this could work. And, and I'm really excited to find out. So that is my number one. Dreams from Zoc. Good publisher. Really cool concept. Cannot wait. And that's it for my top five quirky games. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. If you are going to be at Essen this year, come on by our booth and say hello. And I hope you enjoyed the list. I will see you again real soon.